In today's show, Jake Madison of Locked on Pels joins the program, and we talk Zion, we talk B.I., we talk Scoot Henderson. Is it really going to happen? Probably not, but it's fun to dream. Welcome to Locked on Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Go wherever you got podcasts and also on YouTube. How about you make this show your first listen every single day? It's coming at you every single weekday, that is. Monday through Friday, five days a week. Make it a part of your daily routine. Make it your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same as Locked On Blazers, your team every day. Today's episode, a fun one. Jake Madison from Locked On Pelicans has joined the program. Because we got rumors to sift through. Some rumors that Jake has been reporting on for a week if you listen over to Locked On Pelicans. But now the heavy hitters are catching up with those of the Locked On Podcast Network. So we're going to talk about them here. Jake, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Busy week. It's been a minute since you and I have done a crossover like this. Yeah, not since the, the hallowed days of Josh Hart and CJ McCollum. But... Um, are these two teams destined to be a sort of trade partners yet again? I think that's the big question here. The reporting that I'll say this June 7th on an episode of locked on Pelicans, Jake Madison reported, I'm going to quote here. I have, I have uh, transcribed a portion of it. I think the Pelicans absolutely love Scoot Henderson really think Scoot is going to be a star and would like to be in the Scoot business. And now the reporting from Shams Charania of, I'm not sure who you reported on behalf of AT&T or something like that. Sean Strani on behalf of AT&T Wireless reported that, indeed, the Pelicans are interested in being in the Scoot business. Like I said, he listened to Locked On Pelicans. He listened to Locked On Podcast Network. You might get the news first. They love Scoot. This is real, isn't it, Jake? Yeah, this is a very real thing. This is someone they've identified for a little while now. It goes beyond the past couple of weeks. I've like kind of hinted at it even a couple of weeks back of, you know, could they trade up? Could they look to do something like this? Because all indications we've kind of gotten is they think Scoot is an all NBA level kind of player. They view him as someone who has a very, very high ceiling, certainly not at like the level of Victor Wimbenyama, who's probably off in his own like universe by himself. But I think they view a huge huge drop off between Scoot Henderson and Brandon Miller. And so all of the stuff that you're hearing of the Pelicans trading up, it's for Scoot Henderson. It's not just to get in and get one of these guys. It's for this guy specifically. And for a team that, you know, could maybe use a point guard, someone that is more of a ball handler, someone who plays kind of attacking and downhill, you know, not the same kind of vein as CJ McCollum. I think that is really something they want to try and add to the team because that's a dimension they're missing. So if they think this is a guy that is, you know, a home run pick, they're going to at least kick the tires on looking into all of that. What's important here, though, is that they're not interested in trading up in the draft. They are interested in trading up for Scoot Henderson. Mm -hmm. And while we this is locked on Blazers, They don't have the second pick. (laughs) So a lot of this, and I think this is like the problem here for Portland is that like Charlotte controls a lot of their destiny. The reporting suggests now that now, as we 10 days from the draft, that the Charlotte is, is, is leaning Brandon Miller, interested in Brandon Miller. You don't believe that, do you, Jake? So, I mean, maybe like it it goes back to last year, right? Like this is prime disinformation season. Like smoke is out there and like you you should not believe let's go all X-Files here, right? Like the truth is out there, but they're not telling it to us right now with anything like that. You remember last year? Who was the number one overall pick? Who was Orlando taking? They were taking Jabari Jabari Smith Smith for a month, for a month. Uh, until what a couple hours before the draft shams or woj tweeted out betting lines shifted overnight it was like overnight the betting line shifted to ben caro and then all of a sudden it came out and that was like i don't know day day of basically yeah it was like hours before the draft yeah exactly it was something like that right like everything was jabari smith jr jabari smith jr and then they took ben caro who was the consensus I think in general, number one overall pick, if you were to aggregate like all the big boards and stuff like that, most people had been Caro number one. So we were like, what are they doing? What are they doing? And they just had you believe in everything wrong until the last minute. This this situation with Charlotte screams that to me. And that's why I think 
and we can get into this too, you know, of with New Orleans trading and trying to get into you know, get Scoot Henderson, you said they're not trying to trade up, they're trying to trade to get Scoot Henderson. And that makes the third drafting at three a little bit risky here because why would, if you're Charlotte, be telegraphing that you are taking Brandon Miller? That's screaming to other teams if they like Scoot Henderson. Trade with the Blazers. Don't don't give us your best offers, right? Give give Portland your best offers. That's terrible GMing. That's a terrible kind of thing to do. So I don't believe anything I see out there right now they might they might take brandon miller but like when you're drafted in the top five of the draft and you're a team that was in the lottery and in that position man stop thinking about positional redundancy and just go with best player available the last thing i'll say with that is this usually you get some contrarian takes around this time of year right like oh there's another point guard in there i'm in thompson and we are right. hearing zero people be like no i'm in thompson's the best point guard in the draft not scoot henderson scoot henderson 6-2 people love to kill short guards in the league and no one is saying he's not the best point guard in the draft that says something i think about how people view him and how nba front offices view him yeah i mean he's i will say uh just to to be a contrarian i will say that rafael barlow of locks on nba big board has had brandon miller ahead of scoot on his board since january or whatever so there are people out there that are like smart mm -hmm. and do this that think that but i would say in general the consensus across the league is that scoot is the guy and that brandon miller is merely someone who could make several all-star teams or something like that like uh it's it, it, there but i do think in it from sort of like when you talk to people about foundational building blocks scoot names scoot's name seems to come up more often uh and and like let's just get this out of here before we kind of move on if the blazers were to do a deal with new orleans pelicans and they were to to make it happen and we'll kind of talk specifics it's going to happen when they're on the clock the, yes. the pels have the pels can't they can't trade up to three and then have another enterprising team like the Pacers or the Magic or whatever say, gotcha, and then they leapfrog them and whatever. Like, So there's no deal that's coming. Everything that happens to the Blazers is, is going to hinge on whatever happens at two, and then the five minutes to decide the fate of the franchise will begin. <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous. No it's going to be ridiculous. Like, it's going to be fun. Like, I'll find entertaining, but I think some of my listeners are, you know, they're, they're just, their insides are melting and I feel for y'all. And I appreciate you listening to the show every day. I really do. But, um, it, we're just going to have to wait. We're just going to have to wait because when the Blazers are on the clock, if Brandon Miller is gone and scoots there, you get to answer the phone and, and it'll be set up, right? Like it's not like the Pelicans and Blazers won't have talked. They'll have talked very specifically, which is kind of what I want to do in the second segment. Let's get a little bit specific about what a deal might look like and who might be leaving the bayou and headed somewhere a little less warm. But before we do that, let's talk about prize picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. Um, right now, prize picks is just making it easy for you to play and go to prizepicks.com or you could, or you could also download the app. I play on the app. And when you sign up, you can get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars. You might spend like a hundred free dollars. How does this work? Well, here's how it works. Every entry, pick two and six players. Uh, the NBA is over. I'm an NBA guy. I play on the app and I play NBA, but NHL uh, finals are still rolling along. Actually, they start in like an hour as we're recording this. So maybe when you're listening to this, congratulations, the NHL's done. But you'll be able to play MLB all season long on prize picks and all, all your other sports that you're looking for, including the WNBA. You pick over under the stat line set by prize picks. You, you make your entry of two and six players above or below their lines. And then you just, if you beat prize picks projections, you win the money. So go take advantage. Go to prizepicks.com, download the app. And when you do, make sure you use that promo code locked on to get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Put in a hundred bucks, give you a hundred bucks, put in 50 bucks, give you 50 bucks. Super simple. Don't forget when you sign up to use that promo code. All right. Still chatting with Jake Madison, host of Locked On Pelicans. The trade that could happen, and this is like we're deep into the hypotheticals. <laughs> it's like, so this is, I think this is real. There are some teeth to the idea that this could happen, but we are, we're wading into the hypotheticals. But when, when, when and if the Pelicans are to make a deal with whoever it is, with Charlotte or Portland or, or whoever it might be, they're going to trade one of their big guns, aren't they, Jake? I mean, you have to, right? Like, I, I've seen a lot of Pelicans fans try and figure out a deal where you could get something done like this for the second or third overall pick, just for Scoot Henderson in general, without giving up Zion Williamson or Brandon Ingram. And I did it 
when you listen to this, I did it on the first yeah. segment of my show the other day, and that segment could have been all of 30 seconds where well, I got say- got to it in the first three minutes. I, I nailed it. Just, yeah. We get this out of the way here. If this is all what you want to hear, I'll give it to you. And it was simply, can they get a deal done without either of those guys? And the answer is just no. I have people tweeting it at me. What about this? And I just say no. That's the only tweet response I do, and I kind of feel like a jerk being so short with them. But like, it, we don't need to discuss any sort of situation where it's the 14th pick and Herb Jones and Trey Murphy and two other picks. People value Scoot Henderson, I think, this highly, and that's just like not enough to get a deal done. So it's going to be Zion Williamson or Brandon Ingram, and I think that's partially why you hear in Shams's multiple AT and T or whatever reports they are that he says they're being really aggressive. Aggressive is including one of those guys in the deal. This is not something that you're going to make up with quantity for the lack of quality of good players in a trade. Yeah, it's like you know they have Bucks picks and Lakers picks into the future, and it's like, is is the promise of Trey Murphy and a twenty twenty seven Milwaukee? But it's like, no, probably not, probably not. You know, it's, no, it's I, just I, that I, simple, <laughs> right? Like, I really think Trey Murphy's going to be really good. Me too. too. I like him a lot. I like him. But no one's trading him for the second overall pick as the centerpiece of a deal. Like, not a chance. Yeah, imagine imagine explaining to Damian Lillard that they flipped they flipped three. It's like, oh, we got bi like. Actually, Trigger Trey is who it is. Yeah. You remember him? <laughs> He's an interesting. It's like I, I think that's the thing. So if if he he hit like ten threes against the Blazers, is that the game awesome, that he did that? Awesome. Yeah, yeah like 30, it was 10, 10 or 30, eleven threes or something. I think yeah. he had thirty five in like thirty two minutes or something absurd like that. You know, and it's like, and then he was like, I gotta go. I uh, the game's already over, and he didn't play the fourth quarter. It was nuts. Um, do you think they're leaning one way or another? Like, do you think the Zion sort of beef makes them want to get rid of Zion? He's obviously like, I'll just say it here for it, like Zion is a lot better than Brandon Ingram. He also doesn't. Dude, you got to be careful saying that. <laughs> you got to be. <laughs> man, there's some play. fans that are going to find you. No, I agree with you. Like, if you're looking at them, forget the, uh, you know, the, the missing games part, right? right. Like just That's in terms of being in a vacuum. Yeah. yeah. You know, Zion's the better player. Zion can be the best player on a championship team. He's an all NBA capable guy. He's the guy that could win MVP of the league. Like he's that good when this dude plays, man, he's unstoppable. He's unstoppable. He shoots 70% at the rim and that's all that he does. And he gets to the line. It's fantastic. The problem is the missing of the games, right? Like that's he where he was not going to play 75 games. So it's like, it's a, it's a calculation. It's part of the calculation. Yeah, and I think, so I think when they're looking at this, that's a big factor. I think they're just a little bit sick of stuff around Zion Williamson. You know, it's just, it's always something. It's always something. Even when he gets off to the great start to the season that he had, he came in in shape. He looked fantastic. So we know he's capable of doing that. Worked with a dietitian and a personal chef over the summer, his own personal trainer. He started to kind of do all of the things that you're like, oh, finally, he's acting like a professional basketball player and doing what they're supposed to do in the off season. And then, you know, things get a little bit tough. He gets injured, maybe doesn't take the rehab nearly as well as he should, wouldn't be in shape to play in the playing tournament. You know, he said some stuff about not feeling like himself. So there's questions of, did he even want to play? None of this is good. And then you get, and we don't need to get too much into this, the personal drama from the past week. And like what, who, who he wants to spend his time with is like, it's not our concern, man. That doesn't right, affect exactly. him on the basketball court. But at the same point, you're like, is he doing that instead of rehabbing his injury is he doing that instead of like actually taking good care of himself and it's a little bit of an open question so it's always something so it sounds absurd to trade a talent as good as zion williamson except when is it just ever gonna are we just ever gonna have a season when he plays and like cool and like either you're good or you're bad or whatever and like i don't know and i think yeah. they're not so sure about that and so the latest drama with a very conservative older white woman owner like maybe she doesn't love this sort of stuff and is like okay like enough is enough and we need to move on from him i think they're still reluctant to trade him they're completely turning over the medical staff the player performance and care staff they're getting rid of aaron nelson who's kind of like a holy name in basketball circles in terms of taking care of players and no one thinks he necessarily should be fired but zion williamson reportedly doesn't like him so they're kind of catering to him and making some big wholesale changes you don't do that if you really want to actively trade the guy if the right deal comes across then i think you consider it you know and it's the same for brandon ingram you know he's played 60 percent of the games these yep. past two years that's not an amazing number you know he not missed enough. 
Yeah, he was in 29 games with a toe contusion that wasn't as serious as the one that J- was it Jaron Jackson Jr. had or Desmond Bain, one of the guys on the Bain, Grizzlies. Yeah. yeah, Bain. And wasn't as serious as that, and Bain came back much sooner. Like, it makes you wonder about the mentality of some of these players a little bit. And I think the Pelicans are looking at this and being like, yeah, they're super talented, but if they don't play, like, we got to do something. Can we just completely run this back knowing we're going to go through this again? Because it's been four or five years of this at this point. And I think that's why they're starting to explore some of this. There's other reasons, too. I don't know if you want to get into that here. Yeah, there's like I want to ask you that like to close, want, yeah. yeah, I want to ask you to close the show because there's some financial okay. stuff for sure. Yeah, for sure. But let's I want to I want to like from from the Blazers perspective, I I, I think and I don't know this from talking to um, people within the team, but I, I think they would lean uh, Ingram over Zion just because of the risk, just because of the general risk. That would be my guess. But I also think, and, and a deal for Brand, for Brandon Ingram, for B.I., Kinston, North Carolina zone would have to include Amphrey Simons. There's just basically no way the money works for the Blazers yeah. on any other end. So you're talking three and Anthony Simons. And from my perspective, three and Anthony Simons is a drastic overpay for Brandon Ingram and something that might cause the Blazers to balk or ask for more. What's your read on that? Yeah, I think so. And I was going to ask you that too. And I, I think there's other things you add into kind of the calculus on a deal like that. But from talking to a few people like loosely associated with the Blazers, it seemed like they were actually higher on Zion than BI. I think if you're doing it just in terms of pure talent, that's what, yeah, he's a better player, right? Like the question is just which one are you going to get more consistency out of? And that's an open question. And BI is maybe the safer choice. You know, I look at Brandon Ingram as a borderline all star, maybe at times a borderline all NBA player. Like he is very, very good. Good. He's really good. Three level score. Does, he can facilitate. Like he's better on defense than he's been in the past. You know, the past two years, he's kind of upped it on that. He's just like a dude that loves to hoop. He's quiet. He wants to just go out and like do his thing. And I dig that kind of player that's not like actively seeking out the spotlight and doing kind of that like look is me, look at me stuff. And just I want to hoop and I want to go and play and I want to win. And he does that. And that's awesome. But 60% of those games, right? There's also, I think, some concerns in the Pelicans about his, God, and it's just always something with this. Like, their camp. He brought more people to New Orleans this year. They may have been in his ear telling him, like, don't play through the toe injury. Wait till you're 100% healthy. The Pelicans went on a 10-game losing streak yeah. waiting for him to come back. And it's like, dude, come on. Now, it's his body. Who knows what he right. was feeling if he didn't feel ready. Like, you get into the weeds with this sort of thing. But that's a concern. And I think that's something around the league that people are kind of concerned about with him, too. And though he was the second overall pick, he's made one all-star team as, like, a replacement guy, one most improved player. But he just hasn't done it enough to be – you know, if he was a multiple-time all-star, you're probably not feeling the same way that you're feeling about Brandon Ingram. Even, of, even if he had had a different season this year. Like, he was yeah. really good – during the the 36 win campaign make the playoffs like his push from when they sucked to when they kind of like figured it out he was awesome and he you know, was he's an awesome point. player yeah like and he but it's just do you get that out of him every night like are you going to get that on a season and it's an open question yeah and i i think he didn't take that same jump this year or or just bring it consistently this year when he played he's still darn good it's just it's it's availability and it's kind of you wanted, I don't know, I know, the Pelicans were supposed to be better. Like they just, no, yeah, <laughs> totally. Like um, it's as simple so, as that. So I think there's some of it is just like, okay, would you want more? I think, I think more, you're not getting Trey and Herb Jones probably. Not in a deal like that. I think I think you could get them to include another pick. I don't know if it would be the 14th overall pick in this draft. You might be looking at like one of those future Bucks picks or something along and, and those lines. And they have lines. three picks in 2024. So maybe you yeah. get you get, hey, the best of the 2024 picks. Yeah, there's ways to do that. You could probably convince him to throw Jonas Valanciunas in this deal. You need a center there. Like, that maybe makes it a little bit more appealing as you're bringing in then maybe two starters. I think Jonas is an above-average center that's not making too much money, but I, I don't have the trade machine open to see now how, you know, the Blazers are going to match at that point, what, like $50 million or something along yeah, those lines? Yeah, it's tough for them. They'd have to probably include Nurk, and then it's like, do the Pelicans want Nurk? Probably not. So then it's, <laughs> right. it, it's, you get into that kind of issues with like these deals spiral out of control really quickly. And all of a sudden you're trading like half of the rosters on each team to try and make like one piece of this basically work. And it's yeah, like, my, that's not how deals come together. <laughs> my, my pitch would be uh, Brandon Ingram, Najee Marshall, 
uh, a 2024 pick and then one of those distant Bucks picks. Like I think they have a 2027 Bucks pick or 2029. They have one that's like deep. And I'd say, just give me the deep Bucks pick. Who knows what it is? Like you could top three protect it or whatever it is. So like that for Anthony Simons, three and, and Nas, uh, that's Nazir Little. And it's like, that might still be, that you know, there's some risk associated with that, but I think that gets you closer. Um, and I'm a big Najee Marshall fan. I think he's good. I think uh, he's a fine player. Like I, I, I would have no problem including him in a deal for this pick. Like he's not. If you really want him, like that's not someone that I'm going to be like. No, we can't trade. Najee no, Marshall. not yeah, Najee. Hustles and does his thing. Like he's fun. You know, it was a great story. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, no, that's not going to hold up a deal. Let me ask you this though: How's the Damian Lillard calculus kind of factor into all of this? Well, great, great question. Here's the thing about the Blazers overpaying. You might just have to, y'all. You might just have to. I think right. that is that is the challenge, right? Is because you are not just trading for Brandon Ingram or trading for Zion Williamson. You are trading to keep Damian Lillard in tow and happy and not... Um, I don't know that like not doing this would immediately... like. I don't know that on July 3rd, Dame's going to request a trade because they didn't um, make the right move on draft night. But I know that it would start the momentum rolling downhill. And there's a world where they don't want to over, they have to overpay because they don't want to start that momentum. That's, that's the plight of small markets in the NBA, I think for a lot of this, right? It gets not, as you said, it's not just trading for Brandon Ingram and whatever it's Brandon Ingram and however many more years of Damian Lillard. And you know what, is there a price there be willing, you know, is there an amount where they're like, no, we just can't do that. And I don't think you're wrong to answer either way on that question, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, it's it it's tricky because I mean, what is a, what is an okay level of of getting better that makes Dame comfortable, and what is an o, an appropriate level of paying to make Dame comfortable that the franchise is with? It's it's a tough balance. I I want to ask you this, and we almost touched on it. Why are why are the Pelicans even doing this? How do we get here? That's what we'll do in the third segment. Join us there, won't you? Still a pass versus point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond. You're still listening to Locked On Blazers. We got fun shows the rest of the week. I'm trying to nail down an interview that if uh, if you're an everyday listener, I've actually already teased, but now it might be slipping through the cracks, so I'm not going to tease it here. But stick around because it might come back. We're still chatting here with Jake Madison of Locked On Pelicans. We've we've kind of danced around this. Why are the why are the Pelicans doing this? What's what's why what's going on? Okay, so there's there's three reasons, and we've touched on kind of at least one of them, right? It's always something with these two, and maybe they just are sick of that, and it's like time to just be out of this business and not deal with this like headache anymore and just wash our hands of this mess. That's one of the reasons. The other one is they're really high on Scoot Henderson. They're just really high on Scoot Henderson, and I think they have him very high up there in terms of what he could be in the NBA. And I think if you're looking at this and this will tie into the third reason, which is maybe the biggest out of all of these, you know, if you look at next year's draft, if there's not a dude that you think reaches Scoot Henderson's level, and I, I'm not going to pretend to be that kind of draft expert yeah. and be like, I'm looking years ahead here. I guys. certainly don't know. Yeah. But by and large, from what I gather, like it's not as good as this draft class. So if you're going to make a move, it's do it for the guy you want, not for like, not a scrap next year, but like settling for second best next year or something like that. Like that's not appealing in how you want to build a team. The third, and I'm going to, I'll relate this to the Blazers too, is the, the new CBA is brutal on players and teams and teams building and the financial implications of being in a small market where you don't make as much money as some of those bigger markets. And this is going to hamper teams. And the irony of this is CJ McCollum, as head of the Players Association, negotiated this thing and it's going to really impact the team that he is on right now. So, where the you Pelicans just signed are a contract extension. We yeah. just signed yeah. an extension. The Pelicans are in uh, not salary cap hell, but they're in, uh, they're getting towards a salary cap crisis they can crunch, keep this team sure. yeah crunch they they can keep this team together next year and not pay the luxury tax there's it's almost unavoidable if they want to keep the same team together to avoid paying the luxury tax after next season and with the way the new repeater penalties come in and the more you're over with that second apron and all of that it just you can't build a team at that point you know yeah, you, it, you, you, it's, it makes it harder to trade for players it makes it harder to sign players all of the things that contenders can do now to kind of like uh, you know, Dante DiVincenzo wouldn't be a warrior. Joe Ingles wouldn't have been a Bucks. Little things like that, where it's like, you you might not, the top of your roster won't matter, but that four, five, six that helps you win a championship, that might be out the window for teams that want to be good. And if you have an expensive roster, 
the margins matter and the CBA is making the margins more difficult to navigate. Yeah, so they're in a cap crunch, which is not a great position to be in as a small market team. They're one of two teams in NBA history that's never paid the luxury tax, the other being the Charlotte Hornets. I don't know if they're going to. So when you're staring, you know, when you factor in all of the penalties and everything, an extra 50 million on top of what your roster salary is, like, are they going to do that? Or are they going to be like, no, you got to blow it up? So if David Griffin, who runs the team, knows that that's coming, look, it's better to do this preemptively than when your back's against the wall. Zion Williamson has five years left on the deal. That looks way more attractive to trade than if he had two years right. left. Brandon Ingram has two years left, right? You rather trade him when he has two years left versus just one year, and then he can walk and he's a rental for a team that wants to trade for him because they're not going to give you as much then. So doing this now preempts, I think, a lot of losing a lot of leverage in trade negotiations. So you can go to the Blazers and be like, no, like you want Brandon Ingram with two years left, gives you two years of him to kind of figure it out. I think that's appealing to a Blazers team that it gives them some stability and you might not lose them for nothing in a year if things go horrifically wrong, like kind of the Dallas Mavericks with Kyrie Irving, right? Like if he doesn't re-sign there, that looks atrocious and no one wants to be in that situation. So I think that's partially why they're looking at this now. It's all three of those combined, right? They don't right. want to do this next year and trade for a guy that they don't have rated as highly as Scoot Henderson. So you may as well use your pieces and get the dude you want even if you have to overpay, even if the Pels have to overpay, sometimes I think it's just go and get your man and go and do what you want to do. And slight overpay, which you have to do in small markets, is kind of what you have to do sometimes. Yeah, I, I think the Pelicans are in, in an interesting spot because I think they were you thought that they, people thought they'd be better this year. Like they thought they'd be in the mix, you know, anywhere from like that three to six range in the playoffs. And if they're there, then it's like, yeah, we're close. Let's be expensive because we're close. When you're not as close and it feels uncertain, then the financial stuff creeps up. And it's like, what are we doing? Which I think in part is, is something that will come into play with the Blazers. Yeah. You trade. If you if, say you make, this they're going to turn into the Pelicans and be in being in the same situation, right? It gets untenable. I think in the coming CBA to pay three plus players, you know, three players, 30 plus million dollars at this point. And contracts are yeah. only going up, right? Lillard's making how much, you know, when you, when you factor that hey, in with hey, another <laughs> worth every penny, right? No. Um, <laughs> Not to me, no, but, but someone, to someone for sure. Someone, you know, but when two players, you you put, he makes 40 something. Is that what it is? It's like is 45 it? million bucks. Yeah. So 45 million plus Brandon Ingram at 30 million. That's $75 million of 135 for. And they're going to have to pay Jeremy Grant. So that's yeah, they, like, 30 million bucks or 29 million bucks of Jeremy Grant. You're. You just don't have much you can do. And then you have a two year window to get it right. Or you are paying, you know, starting to, and the Blazers have done it. Like they've been really good about paying the luxury tax and keeping a team and trying to be competitive. They should be like applauded for that, but they're going to face down a hundred million dollar, a $200 million tax bill for an eighth seed. Yeah. I mean, would they face down a hundred million dollar tax bill for a fifth seed? Right? Like if you're not, yeah. if you're not Joe Lake and you're just, and you're printing money and winning titles, it, or Steve Ballmer and you just don't care there is a, <laughs> there is a certain point and no one like I don't think the Allen estate should care but that you know uh not every team operates like Steve Ballmer so it's like it, you have to make these decisions and I think when the sort of the cycle that the Blazers are in are you just have to be really expensive in the immediate term over the next two seasons and then you then the bill might come up and then you'll have to figure it out like they have done or they have been really proactive in not paying the luxury tax each of the each of the last two years they've ducked it they've made some just straight cost cutting moves uh norman powell roco just kind of getting kicked out the door um yeah. uh you know even getting rid of larry nance to like specifically not have future money on yeah there, right? that was like, so bizarre that he was just included in that deal and i was like he's not bad like he's not amazing but he's not bad you don't want to just toss he him play in on, he would be a playoff rotation player on almost every team in the league it's just like it's odd um, but, you know, they've made some decisions that have been specifically set up to be expensive now. So if they're going to have a cycle to be expensive, it's now, which is why if you have to overpay and you end up with Zion Williams's giant max contract and Dame's giant max contract, and then you also pay Jeremy Grant, that might just be that might be the risk you have to take. And um, market size be damned because that's where they're at. It, look, you know, Zion missed all NBA, so he doesn't get the like super, super max. So it's 30% of the cap, right? 
Yeah, he's at 25%. So, like, that helps things, I think. It's like a blessing in disguise on him not making that sort of thing. You know, that's nice. So, he's not coming in at, like, the, you know, the super max for what he could have had. Like, that's important. Maybe it makes it feel cheaper than it would have been otherwise because he's an all-NBA level talent. So, there's there's things that go into it. But, like, this is how small market teams have to operate like it's it's nice to say owners should spend the money and it's not mine yeah absolutely spend the money oh, yeah, but it's I not the reality the of like a situation like oh. my listeners get mad at me they're like what You're trying to save gail ben some money i'm like i'm not i want her to spend it but she's not going to so what yeah, do you these, want me to say here? i want them to be deeply irresponsible but they don't <laughs> yeah. call me with with uh, their their financial concerns i want to get you out of here on this are they going to make this trade are not this trade with the blazers are they going to trade zion or bi before the draft or <sighs> Can I put a percentage on it? I'll, yeah, I say there's you can put a, a percentage a, on it. Like a seven and a half percent chance it happens. I'm not going to go all the way to like 10% that it happens. I think it's still pretty low and the stars would almost need to align, but like it's not close to zero. You know, when when that Zion drama came out, I'm about to go record Locked On NBA with our friend John Corrales of Locked On Celtics, and he texted me being like, oh my God, I'm like, I think they might trade Zion. And then a couple days later, right, all of the stuff comes out. So it's something that's on their mind. So there's definitely, this isn't just like smoke for smoke's sake, I don't think. Yeah, th- I, I think, like I said at the top of the show, I think this has teeth. Whether this happens, it does. Specifically, <laughs> whether the, the Blazers and, and Pelicans are trade partners i don't know but this has this is real like their interest in in scoot and their interest in kind of getting off of one of these two guys is real um i think uh go listen to locked on pelicans and get the scoop from jake because he'll have you covered he does a wonderful job there jake so thanks so much for joining the program of course dude happy we uh made this work yeah, listen, listeners, you don't know what a huge favor Jake did. <laughs> this, hey, this we're just, show, it's not a favor. This is just like, yeah, this sure. Is a, this is a minor miracle that we're recording this. So when you listen to it, be thankful that that some some sometimes you do get lucky with timing. Uh, come back and listen to more shows. We'll do, like I said, uh, if you're everydayers, you might already know what's maybe coming. And uh, if you're not, go listen back and maybe you can solve the puzzle. But come back. We do five of these a week wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Tell your friends, I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.